Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to take a look at this strange new DIY kit called Jelly Sand. I think this came out last year, but was relatively unknown until it went viral recently on Korean craft channels. For this reason, I thought it was a Korean product, but after doing some research, I actually found it being sold on Amazon UK. The company is called Yulu, which I've never heard of before, and it's based in Hong Kong. So the most obvious thing you notice right away is that this is strongly inspired by rainbow jellies. I have a whole video on that here in case you haven't seen it before. However, the graphics and photography for Jelly Sand are noticeably rougher and not quite up to professional standards. It gives off dollar store vibes, which is a huge shame because the product, as it turns out, is actually very unique and entertaining. I bought the big set called the Super Studio, which comes with a water tank and a special base that can hold your work in progress. It also comes with a spoon, character molds, lots of jelly sand, and details for the faces. There's also space to store your sand, although you only get four slots, which is a lot less than the total number of colors. So the whole premise of this DIY seems identical to those make your own bouncy ball kits. Those have been around forever and I filmed one of them last year. Here's the footage from that video, and you can see how the packets of colorful granules look almost exactly the same. These contain PVA, which sticks together upon contact with water. I actually made a follow-up video where I discovered that if you soak the bouncy balls long enough, then you can even turn them into slime. PVA is the active ingredient inside glue and face masks that's required to make slime. However, to my surprise, jelly sand is not actually the same as bouncy ball PVA, but more about that later. The first step of this DIY is to take out one of the face pieces and press it into the mold. These molds are a bit flimsy and they remind me of the disposable ones from the Sumiko Garashi jelly kit. Then fill up the tank with warm water. The workstation has a useful slot to keep your mold upright, but my first attempt failed because the sand fell through. This was because the mold wasn't sealed completely and you really have to press all of these dots firmly into place. Then fill it with your colors of choice and shake it in between to let the sand settle. Place the entire mold in water for at least 60 seconds. The color of the sand becomes quite a bit darker and everything sticks together. I wanted to see what this looks like in super close up and you can see that it has a transparent, almost gelatinous texture. The name is actually quite fitting because the best way to describe this is really a jelly-like sand. It's also stickier than I expected, and it seems to solidify a lot faster than the PVA from Bouncy Ball Kits. Now I'm just playing around with a few more designs. One interesting thing I noticed is that all of these molds are randomized. So even if you get the largest kit, there's no guarantee which characters are going to be inside. This gives the product a secret blind box element, which is surprisingly fun. You also don't know which facial expressions you're going to get, and there's a massive range of funny designs. In this respect, I find Jelly Sand more exciting than Rainbow Jellies because the latter one always gives you the same characters and faces. The molds should be left alone for 10 minutes until the sand is hardened. Then take your character out carefully and add the face. If there are any bits sticking out, then you can simply trim those away. One thing that struck me about this is that the texture feels quite different to those bouncy balls. Especially on the bottom, it seems like all the PVA has melted together to form one solid shape. In comparison, the bouncy ball kits tend to have a grainy texture even after they've been inside water for a long time. This one feels totally smooth with a slight elasticity. As you go up the character, the sand becomes a bit grainier, presumably because there was less water up here. However, it's still a lot more dense than those bouncy balls. This leads me to think that jelly sand is actually something different, and they came up with a new formula just for this craft kit. These are also slightly squishy, but not as flexible as rainbow jellies. However, I like the fact that the whole process is foolproof, and you have a lot more creative control over the design. You can layer or mix the colors, whereas with rainbow jellies, you're stuck with the one shade that comes in a pre-made pack. I've also had rainbow jellies go horribly wrong where the squishy liquid leaked out and it causes an unremovable stain on the sofa. 
So on the whole, Jelly Sand is pretty clever, and the waiting times are also short, which is crucial if you're making this with kids. Now I really want to try an experiment with a smaller kit. This one comes with two random molds, three colors of sand, and stickers for the face. Based on everything I've seen with a jelly sand, it must be possible to mix in other things such as glitter or pigments. The main ingredient is PVA, which is simply a water-soluble polymer. The sand turns sticky when wet and hardens once the water evaporates. So if I mix glitter in here, then the jelly sand must be able to hold it together once dry. I'm deliberately adding a lot of it just to see how much glitter it can handle. If this method works, then it gives you so many more options for customizing your pieces. The only thing I'd advise against is using very chunky glitter because that might get stuck when you're trying to scoop the sand into the mold. I find that you often have to tap these a bit because the sand really needs to settle and you end up using a bit more than you think you need. So once this is filled up, I'm submerging it into the water tank and then leaving it to dry. To my surprise, the glitter held together really well and this looks super aesthetically pleasing. By using this method, you can also make the jelly sand last longer and you won't need that many refills. One final update is that after I left these pieces alone for a week, I realized that the surface is completely solid. These are very heavy and they feel almost like resin or polymer clay. The top layer has a smooth and slightly transparent finish, which is completely different to those bouncy balls. Just for comparison, if you drop these onto the table, then they absolutely do not bounce. So the conclusion is that jelly sand is not actually the same thing as bouncy ball sand, even though they both use the same technique. I started off this DIY expecting the kit to be a fun but slightly gimmicky version of a DIY bouncy ball kit. However, this turned out to be an unexpected favorite out of all the craft kits I've ever tested. This has a lot of hands-on time and you get a good amount of creative control. If you decide to add glitter, then you can create even more variations. The process itself is also very foolproof, so your pieces will always turn out well without wasting precious ingredients. The ultimate test was doing this with my three-year-old daughter, and even she managed to make some nice designs by herself. The final thing that sold this kit for me is the blind box element of the molds and faces. Everyone likes a mystery, and it's surprisingly fun to see which ones you're going to get. This also makes it more tempting to buy refill kits, because those might contain different characters. Unfortunately, this kit seems to be off the market now, which is a real shame because it deserves more credit than it got. It launched back in late 2021, but almost nobody heard of it, and it didn't go viral on social media. If you happen to see this in a the shop, then it's definitely worth trying out. They seem to be on clearance or end of stock in most places. Rainbow jellies, which came out much earlier, are still really popular, even though they haven't changed the packaging or design for ages. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe to my channel for more weird DIY reviews. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!